and his love and care of me. And that, uh, ooh, we're talking about four months, something like that. So uh, as it gets closer, it is exciting. There's all kinds of emotion going on. But I just thank God for keeping me. And that's the testimony for me. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but I've been single for about 13 years. Serving the Lord with everything I have. Waiting patiently on God. But in my waiting, I was serving him. I did not sit and cross my arms. I did not twiddle my fingers, but I served God with everything I had. And um, waiting and waiting and waiting and smiling and serving. And so I say he was worth the wait. And so um, tonight I'm speaking about gold against the grain. We gotta go against the grain, don't we, saints? My subtopic is living for the God you love. And so when you think about going against the grain, that means you have to stand against the masses. They over here, and you over here, and you look different, and you talk different, and you think different. And so what does it mean to go against the grain? To do something that is in opposition to the general movement of things. Going against the masses. Go against prevailing opinion or thought. To be different, to think different, or to act different. To go against the general accepted practices and social norms. Stand up for what is right and good and just requires one to go against the grain. And so I'm coming to encourage us tonight that we got to go against the grain, saints. We are living in a time when it is getting harder and harder. Uh, and and it's, it's not getting hard for us to serve God, but they're making it where they're trying to change the, the societal norms so that it's like, what is going on? And so we have to stand. We have to be alike. We have to look different. We have to be different because if they, there's no hope anywhere else. Because everything they are seeing is changing rapidly. Every day something new is in society. They're changing the laws to accommodate people's choices for where they want to live. They're changing, they're taking a God a prayer out of school. They did it a long time ago. Trying to take him off the money, trying to take the Ten Commandments out of the court. And so you're trying to take the foundation that our world was built on. We have to stand and go against the grain. But we need God's strength and spirit to go against the grain. So I'm reminded of the scripture, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the spirit is, and I didn't say fruits, I said fruit. It all goes together. And we thank God for Pastor's wonderful book that he taught us on. Because the fruit of the spirit is, which means it's present tense, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Control against such there is no law. So this is in, this is this is the word of God. We don't see a lot of this exercise in the people of the world, and so we got to go against the grain and even and even exercising love and joy and peace because the world don't know nothing about love. Love in the world is such a physical, it's such a physical meaning to it. But when we talk about love biblically, we go to First Corinthians, the book on love. And, and it has substance, it has meaning, and it doesn't change, and it grows, and it enhances. And so we must seek the Lord if we're going to go against the grain. We need his strength and his spirit if we're going to go against the grain of the world today. Amen? My next scripture is Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then it too says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so the two words that stand out to me in that scripture are conformed and transformed. Conformed is following the standard. And there's two standards in the world we live in. And then there's transform, which means change. So how many of us are going to follow God's standard or the world's standard? There's two. So we can't conform ourselves to the practices of the world. They change, they're up and down. They, they contradict and go 
against the word of God. We have to be changed in our minds. It starts with your thinking. And so if our thinking doesn't change, what's going to change? Let us render ourselves all that we are, all that we have, all we can do, and after all, God has done for us. What a return it is for such receivings. And, 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 why can't we just serve him and give him and give him for all he's done for us? Jesus paid the price. We don't have to. We don't have to go to the cross, but he gave us the best solution that we have to accept his son. And that means we have hope and help all the time. Conversion and sanctification are the renewing of our mind. It's a change. But it's not a substance, but it's of the quality of our spirit and soul. And that's what it is. So it starts in the mind, and it begins to change the way you think, the way you act, the way you behave, the things you want to do. That's what the Word of God does. Um, the great enemy to this renewal is conformity. That's agreement or submission to this world and its way of doing things. And so we have to assess our ways every day. And we have to assess them against the word of God. That's the mirror. And we look at the word every single day to say, Lord, if I'm not there, help me get there. And if I don't find myself in that place, I know I can get on my knees to get what I need from you. Because I don't have to conform. I don't have to be like the world. I don't have to look like them. I don't have to think like them. And I don't have to be like them. Because the word of God is absolute. I'm the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Don't nothing change with me. Nothing changes with God. Don't fall into the customs of those who walk in the lust of the flesh and mind earthly things. So another word for customs is practice or habits. We can't follow the habits of the world. They try to do everything they can to fix what's going on with them. If they got alcohol problems or drug problems or fornicating problems or lying problems, they're looking for quick, temporary solutions. But I want something that's permanent, that's going to change me, that's going to help me and strengthen me every single day. Temporary ain't going to work for us, no more saints. We need a permanent solution to our problem today. Thus to be godly, it is to give ourselves to God. God's way begins with his word. Yes. So you got to stay in the word. As Christians, many times we are called to go against the grain. And I'm sure we all can raise our hands because I'm looking at a, a whole bunch of miracles in the room. And each one of us took, made us, took a step and had the courage to go against the grain. Because many of us have family and friends the minute you said, I'm saved. I accepted the Lord. And the minute you like me. I remember when you was doing this, and I remember when you did that. And I so they trying to bring up whatever thing you did. But see, I don't care what you say, because this thing, it's, it's a daily walk for me, because I know what I'm doing. And while you still over there living beneath your privilege, you ought to come on this side. Amen? God's word demands that we fight and stand for many things that are in opposition to the world's agenda, such as the sacredness of marriage. So we know what they're doing with the marriage, they're trying to tear it apart, the foundation is gone, it's, you know, man and woman is it, it's in the Bible, but the world says man and man, woman and woman, we got the word of God, and they're trying to destroy, but we stand, we say, the word is true, and it stands, and we're going to stand with the word of God. Um, alternative lifestyles, the value of life, the exclusion of the gospel of Jesus Christ, how we treat others, abortion, injustice, hatred, sex outside of marriage, etc., that is what the world says is okay. But the word of God says other. So we go to Romans uh, chapter 8, verses 5, David says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Are we walking in the spirit of the flesh? The carnal mind is ruled by carnal logic, carnal rationale, carnal wisdom, and carnal intelligence. But the spiritual mind is ruled by spiritual logic, spiritual rationale, Spiritual wisdom and spiritual intelligence. 
It all begins in the Word of God. So whose standard do you live by? Man's way proceeds from the lust of his own heart, but God's way begins and ends with his Word. So the Word tells you, not just from human thought or effort, but the Word of God in 1 Corinthians 3 and 18 says, true knowledge is from God. Getting ahead is money and power. That's what the world says. But God says getting ahead is losing yourself. That's in Matthew 6, 19 and 21. The world says wide is the way of confidence or acceptance. But the Bible says narrow is the way to heaven. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. The world says serve yourself first. But the Bible says serve others. Matthew 21 and 16. And finally, the world says, good deeds make you good. But 1 John 1 and 9 is saying, Jesus makes you good. Amen. Amen? And so, if we know the word of God, we know that being good ain't going to get us into heaven. We got to go to Romans 10 and 9, where it says we got to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Amen? Amen. And so... If we're going to do things the Christian way, we have to go to James 1, 19 and 25. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So it says slow, slow, slow. Slow to speak, slow to wrath. So that's talking about some self-control. Where are you going to get that from? Amen? That's coming from the word of God because we're running in salvation. We need self-control. You're going to need some help when somebody cuts you off on the freeway. Or when somebody do something to your family. Or when somebody, as the brother said, they messing around with your car and they, you know, cursing you out. You're going to need some self-control to say, I'm not going to come down on your level. I'm going to say what God told me to say. I'm not going I'm not going to come back at you the way you came to me. I'm going to stand at what I know. Because I'm going to look different in the end. I'm going to do things different in the end. I'm not the old man I used to be. I'm going to do things the new way, the way I know to do today. Amen? Amen. My God, my God, he's worthy. Yes. So let's look at Colossians 3, 5, and 11. It says, therefore put to death your members, which are the old earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because these things, the wrath of God is coming against the sons of disobedience in which yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of the mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, Slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. So it's telling us we gotta put these things off and we're gonna go against the grain. These things go on the side that we don't serve anymore. We don't serve the devil. We are not of the worldly sinful nature. We on the other side. And so we gotta put these things off, saints. Now let's go to Proverbs 3 1 and 7. My son, do not forget my law. But let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. And so we remember the word of God. It says, length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Add to you. So that's that wisdom and knowledge that comes from God. You can't get that from the world. Because the world is self-destructive. They change, they're up and down. They, are, they don't have self-control. They don't want to use wisdom. They want everything fast, and I'm going to do it my way. But the Lord says if you do not forget his laws, long life will you have, long days and peace. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor in how you see them in the sight of God and man. We got to write those words on our heart. Because sometimes, you know, you don't have a Bible with you, and you, you need to remember something. So if you don't put nothing in, you can't get nothing out. When things get tough, you won't remember in 1 Peter 5 and 7, the Lord said, cast your cares upon me. So I care for you. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So when I don't have the Bible, I gotta have it here. Because as long as I got the commandments here, as long as I got the word here, I'm gonna always be able to stand and go against the grain. When you do what you do, I'm gonna look different. I work at a company that the people just 
Lord and stand as they do all kind of things um, to entertain and please the customer. And I asked my boss one day, I said, do y'all do anything where there ain't no drinking involved? Because <laughs> everything they do is party and drinking and entertaining. I said, Lord, do that. I said, I do not want to be a salesperson or account manager because I'm telling you now I'm not doing that. And so it's, you have to make it plain. And she just looked at me, but I meant that. I am not going to compromise out my salvation to entertain your so if that's what y'all want to do, sorry, I'm going to stay over here right. in this role because I'm not doing that. Amen? Yeah. And so to me, that's going against the grand standard of what I believe in. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And then Philippians 3, 14 to 16 says, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. So we heard mind and did the same rule. So let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It started with the mind, you got to clean the mind. Because we have a tendency to think, all right, I'm going to do it my way. This is my perception. This is the way I grew up. This is what grandma did. This is what daddy did. You know, so it's all these habits and examples and, and family examples that really are not good for us. And so when you begin to get into the word of God, you gotta have the courage you need to even go against your family. I even go against my family. All my family grew up seven days, I grew up seven days. When I came back in 2000 and began to serve the Lord, he didn't send me to church on Saturday. He sent me to church at God Christ on Sunday. And my family began to challenge me. And I studied the word and I left it. But one day the Lord said to me, it's not about them, it's about me. If they got a problem with they can go to church and tell them to talk to me. I had, to, I had to say, this is what God told me to do. If you don't like it, that's not my problem. I'm not serving you, I'm serving you. Yes. Amen? And so I just had to, and again, that's my courage to say, Lord, I'm doing this because you called me. You saved me, you spared my life, and I was out here doing everything that I could. He could have took me out, mother, but he didn't. And because he did Because when you get the word of God, it tells you who you are. 
They better than you. You got to combat with that with the word of God. Build your mind and thoughts with God's word, songs of praise, and devotionals. Continue to maintain a steady stream of true encouragement. I need you. I need you. We need each other. Because without each other, we're going to get our strength on. You know, for people that say, I can stay home and get what I need, I'm sorry, I can't. Because if I'm at home by myself, and I'm going up through, I'm looking around, I can go on my knees and pray. But sometimes I need somebody to show me the crown. I need somebody to see that I'm hurt. I need somebody to understand what I'm dealing with. And sometimes God will say this to the first lady. He'll say to the mother. He'll say to the sister darling. People will pull you to the side. They don't know what you're going through. But because God told them something, you're going to get the strength you need. I can't get that at home. So I need to be here with you all to get what I need when I need to get it. Amen? So I'm not going to stay at home. I'm going to try to get people with y'all. Because the third thing that will help you go against the brain is seek that community. When you are feeling alone as you go against the brain, seek the fellowship, encouragement, and support of like-minded Christians and believers. You need those people that believe like you do to get the strength and encouragement you need. We go through some really hard things in this world today. Stuff happens to us, happens to our families, and you cannot do that on your own. It is much easier to keep going strong and consistent when you know others are walking this road with you. So every time I'm walking down that path, I look for a second. The first lady that can pass it, and the mother that's got it. I thank God that I ain't by myself. Because, hey, when I was out of the world, I wasn't by myself. So I sure ain't coming up here to do, serve God and be by myself. Because when you, when you make that So 
going to disagree, we got to forgive. Now that ain't an easy thing to do all the time. But the word of God says, I'm going to disagree if I forgive them their trespasses. Because we know the world don't do that. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. So be kind, tenderhearted, and forgive. That's going against the grain. Matthew 18, 22, 21 and 22. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. As much as 70 times, Jesus said to him, I don't say to you 70 times, but 70 times 7. And so, Lord, I take that as a day. I got to forgive you no matter what you do to me today. I got to forgive you today. Tomorrow's a new day. And just like Jesus forgave me, I got to go against the grave on that. And I got to forgive. That's not an easy thing to do, but the Lord said do it. Romans 12 and 19, beloved, never avenge yourselves. But leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So when people do you wrong, it's not for you to get them back. Leave them to the Lord. Pray. That's going to the brain because most people say, if I turn that cheek, you hit that other one, I'm coming after you. Us, in the, in, in, us Christians can't do that. We got to step back and pray for you. But you need some strength and you need the Spirit of God on the inside of you in order to go against the brain and do that. Amen? It says, Matthew 5, 4 to 46. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, Lord, I need some strength. I got to go against the brain. That's serious right there. I got to pray for them, bless them, when they hate me, despitefully use me, and persecute me. The Lord says, I still got to bless you. The world ain't trying to do that at all. And so the word of God helps us and gives us the strength we need with the Holy Spirit to go against the brain and do just that. And then it says in Philippians 4 and 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And if we keep this in our mind, yeah. it also helps us to go against the grain. What are you thinking about? How, how, are you letting those thoughts kind of fester in your mind and you go to your heart? You got to get them out of your mind immediately. Even though I'm saying you do things that you can't control, you're not going to let And so I'm not going to let you rule my day. I'm not going to let you control my emotion because I'm going I'm to uh, monitor my thoughts. And so that's going against the grain. Amen? So, in my closing, do not listen to the people who try to stop you and tell you you will never be successful. Once you are started to act different than the masses, they will do anything to stop you. So, you got to be prepared for that. You need the Word of God to combat that. Not because they don't want you to succeed, it is because you are doing what they want to do, but they don't have the courage to do it. It takes courage. To take every step, every day you take a step towards God, it's courage. Yes. Lord, I'm serving you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I believe you. Yes. Lord, I accept you. Yes. Lord, I don't care what happened. I'm going to trust you. Yes. I ain't got no money today. Yes. Bills need to be paid. House burned down. Husband yes. acting up. Kids ain't saved. Drugs in the house. I don't care what happened. Each step you take. Yes. I'm going to say what you are. Yes. And people can't comprehend that. Right. When they know you're going through stuff, and they're looking at you like, why you happy? What's wrong with you? Because I got joy when I think about what he's done for me. Amen? Because he's done for me. He did it before. He can do it again. You are representing what they don't have the courage to become. And so I encourage each one of you to realize you're becoming something your family and friends around you don't have the courage to become, but you can help them have that courage. Because if they know where you come from, and they see you do it and continue to press towards the mark, they know they can do it too. People like changes. What they don't like is being changed. So one of the reasons people will not support you is because you are changing and they are not. They're staying the same. So we go to Hebrews as my final chapter, my final verse. Hebrews 4, 14 and 16. And it says, So then...
Since we have a great high priest who has entered into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly what we believe. Yes. I'm sorry, did I take the wrong one? Oh, okay. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of his gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it. And so that, that's another person that lets you know you're not alone. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. There's nothing you have not experienced on this earth that Jesus didn't experience himself. And so go to the word and get the strength you need. Because if Jesus hadn't gone against the grain, where would we be today?